You can get very respectable audio quality out of a plug and play USB microphone. However, down the road in your streaming or YouTubing career, you're gonna to wanna to upgrade to an XLR microphone and a mixer or USB audio interface. What you're hearing at the moment is a blue ember condenser microphone connected to a Go XLR mixer on a blue compass boom arm with a pop filter. This combination is just shy of $700. In this brightly colored, vibrant, cornea popping box to the left of me, or right, because it's probably flipped on camera, is Mayano's XLR microphone and mixer bundle. Now, when I saw it on their website, I knew I had to get in contact with their PR team and see if I could test it on the channel because it is very, very similar in certain aspects to the Go XLR. It has built-in sound effects with a soundboard where you can record your own special effects, as well as vocal effects. That's right. You heard me. Vocal effects. Mayano, what, what, are you, what are you doing here? No XLR port in the back of an XLR mixer? Come on now. So I have worked with Mayano in the past, reviewing some of their products on the channel, giving a comprehensive review, showcasing the pros as well as any cons or areas of improvement for their next version or iteration of the products. And thus far, I've been very satisfied with their products, especially when you look at the asking price. They're incredibly reasonable, but by no means cheap in quality. By the way, if you hear some random booming in the background, I am in the middle of a thunderstorm right now, but here at Gamer Heaven, we make videos rain or shine. Mostly rain, because it's Florida. So you have two instruction manuals here. This one is for the XLR microphone. It is color and it does show you some of the features of the microphone, such as the dynamic range and where the receiver or pickup pattern is. It's a cardioid. And then you have this larger instruction manual here. Again, color, of course, full pictures. And this is for your USB mixer, which again, in my opinion, at least from, at least from previewing the landing page on Amazon, seems like it has a lot of the features of the Go XLR. We'll have to see, that is a huge price difference. A letter to the customer of a Miano Caster Lite. Awesome. Very nice little letter here from the CEO. Obviously, I don't think she hand uh, signed it or anything like that, but really nice showing you the features of this product, thanking you for um, joining the Miano family and whatnot. And you know, this is just overall a very premium unboxing experience thus far. Then you have a customer service card. Are you happy like this guy here with, you know, his cheeks are going in an upward fashion or are you like this sourpuss guy that just sucked a lemon and you're not feeling well? If you have any issues with the product, you can reach out to customer service or if you are happy and want to give them a positive review and some praise, a little slap on the tuchus, a good, a good game, if you will, you can do that as well. And this is nice. This is a little cheat sheet here. This uh, little ASMR for you guys. This little card right here is a cheat sheet that shows you how to connect different devices to the mixer, which is very nice. And you might be looking at the back saying, um, it's an XLR mixer. I don't see an XLR plug. You're absolutely correct. That is an issue. And I will get to that during my con section. Mayano, what, what, are you, what are you doing here? No XLR port in the back of an XLR mixer? Come on now. So you have this nice thick foam in here. Pulling that back, you have uh, you have a perfect cutout for your mixer and your XLR microphone. Overall, I have to say the packaging is incredibly premium, especially because I have unboxed three and four hundred dollar mixers and USB audio interfaces in your faces that were thrown in there with some some egg carton, some packing peanuts. This is just a lot more premium of an experience. And you also have little cutouts for your finger to get the microphone out. Very nice. Good weight to that XLR microphone. You could really peg somebody with this thing. Holy moly, I'm pulling that back. Now, granted, if I was unboxing this like a normal person, I would just have it laying flat, but as it is for an unboxing, I gotta show you guys what I'm doing here. USB-C to USB-C jumper, USB-A to USB-C connector, looks about a 10 footer, 3.5 millimeter to 3.5 millimeter jack, tri-band, XLR to 3.5 millimeter. Mayano, come on now, buddy. This is an assault baton for self-defense. You swing it out and uh, go for kneecaps. Just kidding, I, this, this is, part of the stand, I'm sure. Now this right here, this base stand is some solid stamp steel directly from the hole or cabin of a Boeing 747. That would stop at least nine millimeter, if not 45. That is some serious, serious stuff. However, there is no rubberized coating on the bottom. It is just metal. So it is going to be kind of sliding along your desk. Granted, it is very heavy, like I mentioned. So that should help quite a bit. That just threads in here like this. If my brain cells are pumping correctly today. And I do believe this bad boy is adjustable. Not too much there. She doesn't get too long, but you know, that is, 
high enough to pop on your desk and get it at a good mouth level. Granted, you're probably going to want to get yourself a boom arm, whether that's a blue compass, whether that's a Rode PSA-1, whether that's a Gator Frameworks. Those are the three that I have tested and stand behind. Granted, those are uh, all over $100 a pop but they are very good. You can get yourself a 20 or $30 Amazon Basics generic boom arm, and they will work, but not well. They don't hold position very good, and they're kind of a safety hazard. They have exposed springs that if they snap, good luck gaming and having depth perception with one eye. Eye patches are not in style anymore. All right, you have a pop filter. Very nice, because I actually had to pay uh, a separate $12 for my pop filter for my Blue Ember, which is like this big. So that's nice that's included. A shock mount. An actually really good shock mount too, so. A pretty substantial value. An XLR microphone, a mixer, an adjustable stand, a pot filter, and a shock mount, which by the way, doesn't feel like it was thrown together in some like Malaysian sweatshop or anything, is a pretty nice shock mount. You pinch on these tabs here, slide your microphone in there, uh, which is a foam or rubberized coating in there to make sure you're minimizing vibration on your mic when you hit your desk and whatnot. And then thread this into the stand. And uh, yeah, this is actually a pretty good shock mount. So thus far, value wise, it's pretty good. The actual mixer does feel pretty cheap and chintzy. The plastics are relatively scratchy and thin. Also, there's uh, not much resistance in these knobs and whatnot. There's no tactile click when you reach the 50% mark. That would be nice for the next version or iteration of this mixer is whenever you get to uh, 50%, if it's snapped into a nice tactile click, so you know, hey, that's 50%. And there is no on PC software suite or program that you can run, for example, with the Go XLR. Again, these are two completely different price points, but because I have been using the Go XLR and because this does, in essence, have a lot of the same features of that mixer, I am kind of comparing them. I know it's not fair, but you know, life ain't fair. So we're going to be comparing them. Uh, there is no onboard software suite. However, you do have rudimentary or basic control of your low, medium and high frequency of your voice. So if you like to, so if you like to have a little bit of that radio-esque presence to boost up the lows or the presence of your voice, you can do that by raising the lows a little bit, uh, taper back the mids and the highs just a skosh. Now there is actually a dust shield that you can remove here. However, I'm gonna leave that on for now because underneath there, there is some very shiny piano black plastic under there. I really wish they would have gone with a gray or a a gray, a stainless, a white, or a matte black material than a piano gloss black because that will collect fingerprints and scratches incredibly well. Ask me how I know, the Go XLR has it too and it's, it's detrimental. Also, if this thing is slip sliding around your desk, that is because there is actual uh, stickers covering the rubber pads on the bottom. So you need to remove these and you will get a lot more grip on your desk. That brings me to the next area of improvement or con, if you want to call it that, for their next revision or version of this mixer. There should be some kind of a stand that folds out much like a keyboard so you can get at an angle because a lot of people are going to have this set up on their desk and they would like to have it angled up like that or even like that would be beneficial so you can see what you're looking at instead of just having it flat or flush on the desk. Um, some kind of a built-in stand in the back, even if it's a cheap chintzy stand like what's on the Nintendo Switch, just something, a kickstand in the back to prop it up like that uh, would be very, very nice. And the next thing that I want to mention that's just rather weird, and I do want to ask Mayano, um, wh why? Like, what is the purpose of it? I'm sure you had a reason during the R&D or research and development to go, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> to go with this decision, but... In the back here, as you can see, there are two microphone inputs, which is awesome, by the way. The Go XLR only has one, but they're not XLR. They're 3.5 millimeter jack to XLR to the microphone. So in essence, this is a full on XLR microphone. So if you use this with any other mixer, XLR to XLR, you're fine. But why not go with a dedicated XLR port? You are going to lose a slight amount of audio quality going to a 3.5 millimeter jack as opposed to XLR to XLR. So I'm not sure if it was the cut cost during the actual production. So it keeps the cost down for us, the consumer. I'm just curious. Hopefully Miano will get back to me on that. The versatility here, because you have two ports, it actually shows you how you can set it up with a guitar and be simultaneously recording your instrument and your voice while monitoring in real time via the headset jack in the back. Or you can use this plugged into your PC, but recording the sound from a mobile device, such as a phone or a tablet via this via this model here. So 
Very versatile. You can fit a lot of audio needs with this one mixer setup, so that's relatively nice. But for our uses, as we're using it on a Windows 10 PC, you don't need either of these 3.5 millimeter jacks, and you do not need this, and you do not need this USB-C adapter. It comes with a USB-A to USB-C plug, which will connect to your PC to give you all the audio interface controls. And then you will plug in your headset, to the headphone port in the back, as well as your microphone via the 3.5 millimeter to XLR plug. Now, as for talking into the microphone, you are gonna talk into the front of it where the Mayano logo is. You can pretty much tell that because you can actually see the, you can actually see the capsule inside of this body here, inside of this uh, kind of windscreen or makeshift built-in pop filter. So you know to speak directly into it. It's not a it's not a top capsule receiver or anything like that. It is cardioid and you are gonna speak into it from the front where the Mayano logo is. We're gonna go ahead and pop that pop filter on there. Now to get this set up for use on Windows 10 PC, you're gonna go into the bottom right down here where you see the speaker icon, right click, open sound settings. Default output device, which Windows automatically defaulted to when I plugged this mixer in is gonna be Mayano and the model number. And then for the out, uh, the input, which is your, your microphone, it's gonna be microphone Mayano. So again, defaulted from um, out of the box. So that's great. So I am a very silly boy, actually. I hooked this bad boy up and I didn't realize, uh, I didn't even have it on. I was wondering why there was no illumination on the actual control panel, on the actual mixer. It's because I forgot to hit the power button in the back. But now that it is powered on, you over there on that camera, as you can see, this bad boy is illuminated and we're gonna have a little fun with this bad boy. So now as for reference, I have the mic at 100% gain. Uh, so it's not a very powerful preamp. You kind of have to expect that with a $140 bundle like this, that it's not gonna have the most powerful preamp in the world. And it certainly doesn't. But it is specifically meant to work with the microphone that was bundled with it. So um, for this microphone that it is, again, meant to work with in the bundle, just keep it at 100%. You can tone it down a little bit. Here's about uh, 50%. Very, very quiet. Um, I have mic monitoring on right now, and I have my wireless headset plugged in uh, the base station for it. I have the Astro A50s, which are wireless headsets, but do have a wired base station. So I'm able to link in daisy chain into my mixer to actually monitor myself and hear my game and whatnot. So first of all, right out, right out of the gate, speaking of gate, it's a noise gate, uh, denoise, I would keep this on. That is with it off, and as you can hear, you can hear my uh, AC, my HVAC unit, and the uh, fans of my PC, uh, me chewing this nicotine gum. You can hear all kinds of sounds that I don't want you to hear. So let's turn it back on. Now it's just my voice. Now again, it actually sounds a lot better and more rich and full if you keep your mouth about, mm, two to four inches away from the mic and with that pop filter you are still going to get some peas on your plosives peter piper pickle the pepper but it does cut out a good amount of them and if you're practicing proper and if you're proper and if you're practicing proper microphone uh etiquette or technique uh to where you soften your peas a little bit your plosives and also your harsh harsh s's sandy sells she sells down by the seashore she does other stuff down there too uh, it doesn't sound bad at all, especially if you put this on a boom arm where it is going to be right in front of your mouth. I think this actually sounds very good. So I have the bass knob at about 60%. I have the mids at about 45% and I have the highs at about 60% as well. This is with the pro mode, which kind of makes you a little bit more crisp and clear. This is called pop mode, which adds a little bit uh, of a, of a mid-range distortion, I would say. This is called MC, which is a lot more uh, boomy and vibrant and low end. If I were a lady, uh, if I were a stallionette in the stable, this is what I would sound like, boys. Yeah, let's get down to the nitty gritty, squeeze a teddy. And this is what I sounded like uh, 30 years ago. This doesn't sound good to you. It's probably because you have robot ears, baby. We also got some built-in audio effects as well. Yeah, all right. Welcome to the show, ladies. Testing out the Miano caster over here. Oh, you guys like it? Whoa, 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 easy now, easy, sweetheart. I said easy. And that's when I told her, if you think this is a Go XLR, this is a $140 Miano bundle. <laughs> I know, right? Knee slapper, side splitter. Mayano's like a bunch of vultures circling around the competition. You know, they see other competitors in the space and they slap the hell out of them. By the way, boys, I actually do have a merch store now. I know, kids, I know. <laughs> I know. Get your merch. So all in all, how I would actually run this microphone in day-to-day -day practice would be with the denoise on, the microphone gain at 100%. 
the lows at about 60% or so, the mids at about 45%, so tapered back just a skosh, and probably uh, the highs at about 65% or so. So also a little sidebar that I forgot to mention during the initial video, so I'm editing it right now post-editing, is this bad boy is actually battery operated. So you can use it plugged in, which you'll probably do if you're streaming so you don't accidentally uh, lose connectivity when it dies or anything, but if you are taking it on the go for some mobile uh, use with a phone or tablet, it does have an onboard battery. It is powered on right now. All right, so the large knob on the right over here is actually uh, labeled music. That is gonna be your system sound. So that is gonna be um, your your entire system sound. So your video game, your chat, whatever. It's not like a mixer like the Go XLR where it's gonna break, uh, break out your input sources between you know your Discord and your game and your chat and everything else. It's literally gonna be your system sounds and then your uh, mic monitoring, but honestly, being able to d d being able to separate those two is very nice and also a little key feature here as you see this logo you guys over there flashing here it does have bluetooth which i think is uh pretty awesome the go xlr does not have bluetooth um and and granted that is very niche i think very few people will actually utilize the bluetooth in there in fact to be 110 percent honest with mayano let me to be 110 percent honest with mayano they could actually remove the bluetooth i know that would remove some of the production cost put that money saved into a kickstand a uh, little prop or kickstand for the back of the mixer as well as a dedicated XLR port versus that 3.5 millimeter jack. I think those are the, the only two major um, revisions or iterations I would make to your next version. Your V2 of this Mayano caster would be, again, a dedicated XLR port. Well, two of them, I would say, to be precise. But if it, if it, if it can only be one and then another 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. But if you have two he headphone ends, they should both be XLR. And then also, I forgot to touch on this here. If you uh, touch this haptic button right here, which is not a physical button, but it's a button that you just, you know, it's haptic. You barely touch it. If you want to go with the auto-tune, the whole T-Pain sound, you can uh, electron, which is uh, basically this haptic button over here. So not a physical clicking button, but a haptic, you know, light touch button. And then to turn that off, you're just going to hold down the electron button. It'll go back to uh, whatever voice mode you previously had. So pretty sweet. And then also you're probably wondering what these four buttons uh, down here are for. And that is actual uh, programmable sound effects. So besides the pre-installed sound effects, if you hold down one of these, I'm recording right now. I'm recording right now. So all in all, this does have a lot of the same... I'm just going to pick this up and hold it like I would have if it was on a boom arm. So all in all, this does have a lot of the same features that the Go XLR does, which I have to say is pretty awesome. What do I mean? What what, what features am I talking about? Well, you have onboard mic monitoring. You have a uh, denoise, which is actually a noise gate, which is adjustable. You have a very rudimentary, very basic equalizer with low, medium, and high. You have four, vo vo four voice profiles plus a fifth if you were to include that electron, which is auto-tune. You have Bluetooth, which would be very convenient for using this with a tablet or a cell phone. However, I mean, for 90% of the people that buy this, that's it's probably just gonna be plugged directly for to a PC for streaming or YouTube use. And uh, all in all, I have to say, it's pretty impressive for the price, uh, especially because, you know, you're getting a lot. You're getting, for $140, you're getting the mixer, which does have quite a few features. You're getting a pretty solid XLR microphone. And even if down the road you upgrade this mixer, the microphone isn't bad at all. Um, the microphone, in my opinion, with the settings that I'm running right now sounds pretty darn sweet. Then you're getting a shock mount. Now, granted, the stand isn't great. It doesn't have a whole lot of height adjustability or anything like that. And you're most likely going to want to get yourself a boom arm. I will have a couple that I recommend down there in the description below. Um, I've been using the Blue Compass for years. I switched over to the Gator Framers for a while and then right back to the Compass 3 from Blue. I think it works the best. Other than having a slightly underwhelming preamp, um, as I am at 100% gain right now, um, it just sounds pretty good. And the fact that you do have sound effects and vocal effects um, and zero lag mic monitoring, it's pretty sweet. It really is. So Mayano, uh, I'm quite satisfied with your product. Again, the future version or iteration, I would say remove the Bluetooth with the money that you save from that. Go ahead and put two XLR ports, vices the two 3.5 millimeter ports, and put some kind of a pla plastic kickstand in the back um, to prop this thing up at an angle so people can actually see the mixer. And overall, good product. That is going to do it, guys. If you enjoy this honest product review, liking the video will help it to get seen by more people. So this information will reach and assist them as well which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly, greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover a lot of news in the gaming community and industry, as well as tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing. And I will see you tomorrow because I upload daily. That's right. That's right, baby.